Yeah, I would love to share more about StoryBrand. Um, and then I'll also share with you how, so how you can basically create a clear message to have your marketing be more effective. And um, it really it's to save money on marketing and be able to convert leads to sales and build relationships with your customers. Um, and so I'll give you some of the steps and then also all the resources that StoryBrand has. We have so many free resources and that's the point. It's kind of the model, like give everything you've got um, a value, let people work through it on their own. And then when they need an expert, they'll come to you. Right. Mm. Um, and it's a giving based model. So, um, the book building a story brand by Don Miller is on Amazon. It's on audible. It's a really simple step-by-step, -step, um, kind of like a workbook mm -hmm. and, um, how it starts is, Hey, our, our brains are wired to only pay attention to information that helps us survive and thrive. Anything that does not immediately help us survive and thrive, our brains are just programmed to filter it out. And so kind of the premise at the beginning of this book and at the beginning of the work I do is, hey, be very aware. People are going to quickly stop paying attention if there's too much information that doesn't pertain to what they want. So where StoryBrand starts is how do we edit, right? How do we make the essential of our message? And then it goes into this hero's journey, which is seven steps, seven parts of the hero's journey. First one is the character. So I'll, I'll share the first three with you in depth, and then I encourage you to get this book um, or hop on my website um, to kind of find what the rest of them are. Um, but the first one is the character. Story starts with a character. And the character is your customer. So your customer, the more specific you can get about who they are, Mm -hmm. uh, what and um, what they want that's the most important thing and even though our brands you know they so our brands solve a lot of problems people find a lot of different things they want inside of what we do but if we're going to make a clear message we have to address one thing the one thing they want the most one thing they want the most so for me the one thing that my clients want the most is to get their why and their message out to the world. The other things they want are for their business to grow, to work with somebody that they can trust, you know, to feel like they don't have to figure out marketing, to stop wasting money, you know, all these things, right? But the only thing that matters when they first, you know, interact with me is like, I just want to make a difference for more people. I want to get my message to the world. And uh, so you define who your character is and what they want. And then the next step is the problem. The story really starts with a problem. If you go into a movie uh, and there's no problem, you're basically just watching, I don't know, well. like a, yeah, a documentary of, you know, scenic aerial shots of the Grand Canyon like every story has to have a problem or we lose interest and we meditate or think about our grocery list and so <laughs> or fall asleep the writer fall asleep totally and then we dream about problems because we can't get them you know like you dream about solving a problem because you you know oh my god I'm not wearing pants in this dream problem <laughs> um yeah so and similarly, defining just one main problem that we solve is really critical. So here's the piece that's really most important um, is that your character and what they want is what your brand is about. Mm -hmm. And then the problem, the way to frame it is that there's kind of an external problem, the physical thing they need. For me, it's people need copy writing. They need words for their website. Um, but that external problem manifests an internal problem. They feel a certain way about it. And that's why they buy. So people who need copy for their website, but their business is running fine and they don't really care and, or they're not even using their website and it's like a, 
I don't know, like a brick and mortar, people walk by or a popsicle. I don't know what it is. Right. Um, but if they don't have any negative feeling about not having the words they need, then they're not going to buy, right? Somebody who has a really messy lawn um, and a lawn care truck drives by, if they're in the middle of nowhere and their dog's really happy in the lawn, they're not going to, they're not going to pay for lawn care. But if they're in Beverly Hills and their neighbor's lawn is perfect and gorgeous and their mother-in-law is about to come by, <laughs> internal problem, I feel insecure about my ugly lawn. <laughs> so they're going to run out to that landscaping truck and be like, hey guys, can you, can I just pay you right now? Right? So people buy products and services because of that internal problem, how they feel about what they need, right? So if you can identify what's the what's the you know external basic thing they need external problem and then how does it make them feel that they don't have it and just simplify that down very simple for me it's people they need copy they need words for their website and a message the internal problem i've experienced is that they uh they really feel um it's like insecure Mm -hmm. from questioning the value of their business to questioning their value as an entrepreneur right. to just being like frustrated. Like this, I, this barrier is the one thing stopping me from really reaching the world. Mm -hmm. So like that insecure, frustrated internal problem, right? And then um, there's a philosophical problem where, you know, your brand is standing there saying, Hey, you shouldn't have to deal with not having the right words. You should know exactly how to clearly communicate what you do so people get it. And uh, that's like kind of the, the, the why statement. Um, and if we can really nail down who is our character, what do they want, what's their problem, and how do they feel about that problem, and just orient all of our messaging to be about that, then what happens is we open a story loop that people can step into. Instead of talking about ourselves, people are you know like okay cool I'm glad you're doing those things I'll check in with you in three weeks but in the meantime I need to solve my own problems right, right. we go from that to uh, people see themselves in what we do and they can relate to us and and also we get all the ego out of our branding mm -hmm. and so the third step of the story brand system is that the brand is the guide not the hero that's the paradigm shift. So if you just go through your action step for the listeners is to go through your website and your, your branding, your messaging, and look at, is this about me and my brand and my business? Or is it about my customer and what they need and what they want? And if you can make that shift, you'll notice that conversations are smoother and easier and that you actually really hear and experience who your customers are and what they want. Um, and so that's the first three steps of the seven part framework. Uh, you can discover the rest of the framework um, uh, by reading that book. And if you go on my website, it's katywardkatieward.com. Um, and then another tool is um, there's a software where you can look at these seven steps and fill them in. Who's my customer? What's their problem? And it's called mystorybrand.com. You okay. log in, you can use the software, um, and it gives you tutorials for how to create this kind of script for your business that we call a brand script. So that's a really helpful tool as well. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what, what I'll leave the listeners with as far as action steps is just make sure your brand is about the people you serve and suddenly they'll listen to you and pay attention to you. Um, I mean, yeah, I like when you frame yeah. that where you're, it's, it's not like I'm, I'm trying to sell you something. I'm really telling a story that you're identifying with and you're literally at inviting them to step inside the story and they, mm -hmm. they become the, the main character in the story. And, but one thing you mentioned, and I, I want you to clarify a little bit, but like in the character segment, you said, you know, you, you want to find out um, who, your, who your ideal client is and what they want. And then in the problem, you're identifying kind of their greatest need. Can you mm -hmm. touch on the difference between those two? And, and do people, most, mostly do they understand what they want? 
or are you leading him in that process of discovery as well? So, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Okay, cool. So I ask about three there in a row. So I <laughs> no, I got it. Okay, the first question I heard is how do I distinguish what they want from their problem? Right. Um, second question is. Um, what if they don't know what they want and you have to educate them on this kind or, of, yeah, or do most they people have, right? Really do they even know what they want? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So for the first question, how do you distinguish the two? Um, what the person wants is it's like, a, it's obviously it's a desire. So the way to distinguish them is like, if you, if you know what the problem is, just take a step back. What are they, what's stopping them? The problem is what's stopping them, right? Okay. So I want a really compelling brand that people are attracted to, but I'm stopped because I don't have the right words. Right, right. That makes so sense. it's the, it, if they are picturing kind of an ideal version of themselves, what's, what's the transformation they're looking for? What's when they close their eyes and they picture like, man, if it was just this way, what are they picturing? Um, so I, I started to help a mastermind called 2X and Genius, one of the, actually one of the business coaches I most respect. Um, and they had, their, their customers wanted more money and more time and more freedom. Um, and so they did business coaching for that. And I was like, that's a lot that people want. It's a lot to process. Um, but when you, when I looked at all their testimonials, really what people wanted, they just wanted their business to work. They're picturing instead of rushing around inside their business, they were picturing I'm on top of my business. It works. Right. It just works. Right. And so you want the, the goal is to identify what the customer wants. That's so simple and basic. It's like a caveman could understand it or a mm -hmm. fifth grader could understand it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want a business that works, you know? Right. And, and we, you know, we, we kind of, is that too simple? Is it too dumb? Like if you're feeling like it's too dumb and simple, that means people can understand it mm. immediately. Right. Yeah. And it kind of fits yeah. in with the whole idea of, of the book about essentialism and the book about the one thing It's just really reducing it down to kind of its least common denominator and, and really clarifying that message. And I mean, looking at even how you describe yourself on your website, I mean, you're very clear on who, who you are and what, and what you're trying to accomplish and who you're trying to attract, you know, who the ideal client is. So 